Today we're going to learn how to interpret remainders for word problems. Let's look at some examples. Addison is hanging pictures in rows. Each row has three pictures. If there are 16 pictures to hang, how many will she need to put elsewhere as they will not form a complete row? Let's see if we can figure this out. One way to do this would be to just draw out the problem. If each X represents a picture, we could say one, two, three in the first row, one, two, three in the second row, three in the third row for a total, total of nine, three in the fourth row for a total of 12, 13, 14, 15, with one left over. And that works fine for 16. It doesn't take that long to draw 16 X's. But what if there were 160? We want a better way to do this. And that's where division comes in. Instead of drawing it out, we can simply divide. 16 divided by 3. 3 goes into 16 five times. The product would be 15 with a remainder of 1. Five complete rows, right? With a remainder of 1. That remainder tells us how many are left over. So in this case, it's going to be one picture. Here's another example. Landon has 25 Rice Krispie squares and can put two into each container. If Landon only wants to have full containers, how many will need to be eaten? This is another way of saying, if he put them into containers, how many would be left over that he has to eat right now? So again, we do the division. Two into 25. Well, two goes into two once. Bring it to zero, bring down the five, two goes into five twice, four with a remainder of one. So one Rice Krispie treat will have to be eaten in order to fit the other 24 evenly into these containers. Here's another example. You have 47 cups of flour and want to make as many batches of cookies as possible with what you have. If a batch uses two cups of flour, how many cups of flour will you have when you're done cooking as many batches as possible? This problem looks a little bit different, but let's think about what's happening here. If you ba baked three batches of cookies, you would use six cups of flour. So if you had started with seven, you would have one left over. So what we want to do is figure out, once you make as many two cup batches as possible, what's left? This is the same as dividing by two. So we take 47 total cups, divide by two cups per batch, and we get our answer. Subtract, we get zero, bring down the seven, goes in three times, and we have a remainder of one. Notice that when we do these problems, the quotient, the 23, doesn't matter at all. All we care about is the remainder which in this case is one. Kevin is hanging pictures in rows. Each row has two pictures. There are 33 pictures to hang. How many will he need to put elsewhere as they do not form a complete row? Once again, 33 pictures divided by two. Two goes into three once. Subtract, get a 1, bring down the 3. 2 goes into 13 6 times. 2 times 6 would be 12, leaving with a remainder of 1. So there will be one picture that does not form a complete row. Logan has 20 Rice Krispie squares and can put 3 into each container. If Logan only wants to have full containers, how many will need to be eaten? Once again, there are 20 squares being put into groups of three. So we have to divide by three. Three goes into 26 times, which would give us 18 with a remainder of two. So there are two that are left over after we put them into containers. So two need to be eaten.
Dahlia has 36 Rice Krispie squares and it can put three into each container. If Dahlia only wants to have full containers, how many will need to be eaten? It's the same basic idea. 36 total. Divided by three. Three in, goes into three one time. Zero, bring down that seven. Three goes into seven twice for a remainder of one. So 12 full containers, those don't matter for this problem. The, what matters is the remainder of one Rice Krispie square. Tyler's organizing his pantry. There are 37 of items of food to organize and three items can be put into each container. If he only wants full containers, how many items are left over? Again, the leftover part will be the remainder. So let's do our division. 3 into 37 goes in one time, subtract, get 0, bring down the 7, we'll go in twice, 2 times 3 is 6, subtract and we get a remainder of 1. There's one item left over after we fill 12 containers. Sarah can fit three can cans of soda in each row in her fridge. If she only puts the cans in complete rows, how much soda will be left out of the fridge if she has 14 cans? Again, we're looking for what's left over, which is the clue to look for a remainder. In this case, three per row, 14 sodas, three goes into 14 four times for 12, with a remainder of two. Two cans left over. Daniel has 47 Rice Krispie squares and can put two into each container. If Daniel only wants to have full containers, how many will need to be eaten? Again, we're dividing 47 by two and looking for the remainder. So two into 47 goes in twice, subtract, get zero, bring down the seven, goes in three times with a remainder of one. So one will need to be eaten. Isabel can fit two cans of soda in each row in her fridge. If she only puts the cans in complete rows, how much soda will be left out of the fridge if she has 35 cans? Once more. We're looking for what's left over, so we divide. Two into 35 goes in once, subtract, bring down the five. Two goes into 15 seven times for a remainder of one. Notice also, only one could have been the answer because the remainder has to be smaller than what we divided by. When you divide by two, the remainder has to be less than two, but it's still good to check the math rather than just relying on the multiple choice nature of the question to answer it.